his creation has to be rejected. No such idea should entertain where you can conceive humans to share those attributes of God which can only belong to the Creator and cannot be shared by the creation. This in nutshell is our belief about Hazrat Muhammad Mustafa Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. If you can correct me anywhere, I invite you. If this is a true belief and your nature, your heart understands it to be true, then at least our belief is according to the Quran and the Sunnah. And whatever beliefs other Muslims hold contrary to this has to be wrong. Right? Thank you. So the next question is from Abdul Rahman <coughs> Muhammad who's from Tanzania. Abdul Rahman? Yes. Is your question? Yes. Right, please sit down. <laughs> So, what is the Islamic standpoint about participating in po political about, part? About what? Participating. Taking part? Taking part in political Taking part? parties. Taking part? Taking part. Participating. Participating, I'm sorry. Yeah. In, in political parties, politics. Please no. Islam grants every person the rights which she is granted by the law of the land. Wherever participation in political life is permissible by the law, all citizens living in that country must benefit from this provision. And this is not against Islam. But they should not participate in political activities in a manner that those activities contradict what Islam requires of these of his serv Allah servants to behave. What I mean is that if political activities are permissible like they are here in every other European country and many other non-European countries, you can participate in political life all right. But if the politicians consider it essential to tell lies to become successful politicians, then Muslims are not permitted to, that, to do that. So they have a moral obligation towards God. That obligation must be kept. Having done that, they can participate in all activities of the country, be the social, economic, or political. So the next two questions are similar. One was asked from Mr. T. Dankwa from Nigeria. Where is Mr. Na I can't repeat him, so unfortunately the name. He repeat it for me. Huh? T. Dankwa or Miss T. Dankwa? Uh -huh. Nigeria. All right, if nobody stands up, we can drop this question because you say it has already been answered. No, it's, it's similar, it's not already been answered. Similar, yes, that's yeah. right. Okay. The question Next. is... Next. It's not been answered yet. Also, not yet answered? No. You said... The, the two of them, two questions are similar. Uh -huh. Right. They are not similar to the question I was answering. No. They are mutually well, similar. They are related but not similar, not exactly and the same. Who asked the second question? The second is from Mrs. Abdul Ghani. Who is Mrs. Abdul Ghani? She at the back. Is she here? She at the back here. Okay then. Thank you. Please. The question is, the Holy Prophet said in his last sermons that there will be no, no prophets, apostles, or no new faith after him. If this is the case... This Where did he say that? This is, what is, this is the question. And it says this is supported by the Holy, by the Holy Quran as well. Where but, does the Holy Quran say that? <laughs> what the Holy Quran says is Ma kana Muhammadun aba ahadin mir rijalikum walaki rasool Allah wa khatam al nabi ji Any tra tradition of the Holy Prophet must be understood in the light of this verse not contradicting it 
So if you quote hadith, any hadith, which contradicts this fundamental verse about khatamiyat of Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa then that hadith must be understood to have been misunderstood. Otherwise it's impossible that the words of Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa should contradict, it, contradict the words of God. Now the, word, the term khatam and the being can be understood literally as well as metaphorically. The literal translation of khatam is signet ring, like the ring I'm wearing. This is a signet ring. And the metaphorical understanding of the word signet ring as it applies to Hazrat Muhammad Rasulullah is whatever the best you can dis you can relate to signet ring should also be applicable to Hazrat Muhammad Rasulullah So when the Holy Quran says he is a signet ring, it does not mean that he turned into a signet ring. It means that he represents all the best of qualities of signet rings. So if you begin to understand the quality of signet rings, then they should all be applicable to Hazrat Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Correct? Now what does the signet ring do? When I make an impression with it, the exact image of what was etched upon the signet ring or nearly exact image is produced on the paper. Now what is the image of Hazrat Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? his character, his character, his qualities, his divine representation. So the, the Holy Quran says, Khataman Nabihin. He was the signet ring who etched its qualities or who imprinted its qualities upon all the prophets. Uh, do you understand the message? Yes. The rest do not. May not. <laughs> so <laughs> let me explain this. It does not speak of the, the finality which other Muslims attribute to this. Of finality I will speak later. But here you must understand that the Holy Quran rejects the idea that Hazrat Muhammad Rasulullah was a father to a man, ordinary people like Arabian people were. Markana Muhammadun Aba Ahadim Muhammad was not a father to people like you. Walakir Rasulullah. But he was higher than ordinary people and he was a prophet of God, messenger of God. Wa khatam And he was like a signet ring in relation to all the prophets of God. So that shows that some reflection of his character must be found in the character of every other prophet. This is the most important and the clearest message which is delivered by the word khatam, by the, the term khatam and abiyin. Where is the so-called finality concept mentioned here? Nowhere. If anyone claims to be a prophet, if anyone is held to be a prophet anywhere in the world, you must study the character of that claimed prophet and you must discover in him the character of Hazrat Muhammad which is a divinely character and without that nobody can claim to be a prophet at all. So he has been told by God to be that ultimate paragon of virtue by whose standards the truth of all other prophets should be judged. This is the message. 
and it is said only